All right, guys, got a little bit uh, going today with this thing. I think I'm going to mount a gas tank and make some kind of battery box. Uh, I kind of decided I'm going to mount the gas tank up here a little ways and um, put the battery box kind of in front of it, but down here. Not, I was talking about putting them in a row down here. But I like to keep this available over here for like stepping, you know, stepping right here to get in it. And also, I like to put body panels on here. And, you know, where the motor is sitting, you know, how far up it is, I kind of like the body the sides to kind of match each other. So I don't want to have, you know, the gas tank and battery taking up a whole bunch of space down here. Uh, I need to keep the gas tank mounted low enough that I can unbolt it and replace it if needed. You know, say I roll it over onto a rock, bust my gas tank. Alright, there's the gas tank. Uh, it's a GX390 uh, the Predator 420 gas tank, so they're pretty readily available. So if I needed to replace it. I've uh, got some other things here. Got a little rack and pinion to replace this uh, tr transmission, you know, gearbox. Um, the the redu uh, re gear reduction for the steering. Um, I don't know how I'm going to mount that thing in yet because I really don't want to mess up with the geometry with this thing as it is. Right now it, is, it works perfect. And so let's we'll see about how we're going to hook that up later, later video. Um, I bank my videos and I do this because this is an expensive stuff. Everything I do is, is expensive stuff and you can only get uh, so much video on it. I mean, I try to video everything I do, but um, if I was just to post the videos as fast as I make them, then I'd end up with too much dead time on my channel, and my channel dies, you know, so... But if I post a video at least once a week, um, YouTube generally uh, is a little better at advertising my channel, you know, suggesting my videos to watch. And if it sits for a month, I get per on the, you know, the back back burner. Um, my goals, um, before, you know, I'll try to get, my goals to, before it gets too cold outside, is to get everything on this thing, brake pedals, the steering, all, everything that needs welded on, uh, mocked up, all the cabling and everything, so that way, uh, you know, through the winter, on, you know, you get decent winter days, you know, it's 40 something degrees, I can come out here and finish welding it up. Uh, a lot of the smaller stuff I can tear apart, paint indoors, you know, so that way in the spring, you know, we can just throw it, you know, just bolt it together. Uh, so yeah, this thing is probably going to be next spring before it's completed. Um, another thing we got is a push, another push-pull cable. Um, I'm going to hook it to, you know, just like, just like this one is for the reverse. And I'm mounted up here, cable's gonna go looping around. And I would like to make some kind of a dash in here and put the reverse lever on the dash. But uh, I guess we'll get started on uh, mounting this uh, gas tank up first. Alright, so I spent like a whole day making a mount for this gas tank. Um, more of the reason of it is, is that it has mounts, tabs, and stuff on it, but they're staggered all about, they're not even, you know. So you see here, this one's a little higher than that one, and they're not even directly aligning with each other. The easiest one was this one. So, there's probably a million ways to mount this thing up, but using the materials that I have, rather than buying more materials and some of the other things about it. But uh, you can kind of see, it's, it's kind of a wreck. You can see here, I kind of got started getting tired with it. You know, to get the thing, because they're uneven, I drilled and tapped those. And then, so I ended up using a piece of key to fasten the two, you know, edges together. I uh, plan on putting the cap on it down here so that you really won't see this ugly end. It'll be more like, you know, this end right here. 
but I think, you know, I started getting tired, and I, I'm only good for so long of working on stuff like this before I start getting sloppy and things ain't working really nice. But I think later on, you know, if I get it on there and everything, I'll try to dress it up a little bit. I think I got it to where I can at least get it mounted up to the machine. Alright, got the uh, gas tank all mounted up. I think it turned out pretty decent. Uh, it needs a lot of finished welding, but everything else on here does as well. But it's fastened in where I want it. And uh, I got enough room to unbolt it and get it out of here. You know, I can easily you know, easily put my gas in but uh, I think next up we'll make a battery tray for the battery box to go in and I think I'm leaning towards kind of make it so it sets down in here a bit I can still get the top off of it and I'll pretty much probably put cross members in right here put set in and probably just drill holes in it and bolt it to the car. I'll probably do it, drill the holes later, but you know, put the cross members in. Now I was thinking of like, I mean, I'll put like some kind of metal plate going down from here with an angle cut to it, mount the voltage regulator on the outside so the air can get to it. Alright, got that uh, battery tray done kind of reminisced about how to go about how I wanted to do this as far as like fastening this thing down and you can just tell I mean this is just a plastic box I mean there, there's no they don't have any reinforcement in the bottom for just mounting it down it's just this thickness throughout and if I was to drill holes through here put even put big washers I mean it would just eventually just tear it loose and then at the same time you got the aspect of holding the lid down. Um, they did give you little straps to run through here. But that's just going to hold the lid to the bottom. How are you going to hold the bottom? I mean the battery's heavy, you know, so you get this thing bouncing all around. But one of the things I've done in the past is I made whole battery boxes out of angle iron. And I put like, it could even be... Just a layer of rubber, I've even used a layer of cardboard, <laughs> just to dampen the battery uh, on the bottom. And then at the top, I uh, put foam, like packing foam for like a TV or something in the top to keep the battery from moving. If, if it can't move around, it's not slamming around and damaging it or even the tray you made for it. So what I came up with is there, I left a space right here. And I'm just going to get those massive, massive uh, zip ties and real wide ones that are like half inch wide. And just wrap the whole thing. And I'll probably put some foam in the top of this, you know, against this lid, against the battery. And just zip tie it up. I'll keep a couple extra straps in the box with the battery in case I got to, you know, snip it off to get, you know, get access to the battery while I'm out somewhere. But... I think that's what I'm going to go with. Right now it's, you know, it can't move. You know, it's in there nice and snug. And so it can't move around. But what am I going to go with? Um, I had my cousin out here the other day and he was sitting in this thing. And the whole time I was making the roll cage, I was trying to keep it as low as possible. So it didn't look stupid. I mean, it's easy for these roll cages just to look stupid because you know, how high they need to be. And um, after seeing him sitting in it, you know, because I always just sit in it. And I'm just using my own body as a reference of what I need. And even if I had a helmet on, I would be hitting this. Just, just hitting it. But... At the same time, you really don't want that even close to you, really. I mean, it's going to end up being no matter what I do, but I'm going to lower the seat. I'm going to cut this thing off somewhere, probably as low as I can go to where there's still this thing on here, but cut it all the way across there, grind these off, and then re-weld the seat back down. That's about the best that, you know, the best that I could do. Um, I do plan on putting, like, foam wrap around these. Um, but, 
you know, so your head isn't hitting the steel. But it, once I put that on there, then I just, you know, your head would be constantly hitting the, the foam. So let's see what we can gain by dropping it as low as I can right there. The only other method of lowering it is cutting in between, you know, here. It is going to make it so it probably scrunches up a bit for the gas pedals, but, you know, your legs will be folded up more. And then the gear shifter might be, you know, you're reaching up to grab it. I don't know. It's not that, it's not that much lower, but at the same time it might help a lot. But, uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and get around to cutting that off. Alright, got that seat all lowered and welded back in there. And this also added a lot of adjustment to the seat. Um, let's see if I can move it while I'm videoing. You see there, and it even has a little notch that keeps it just a wee little bit away from the edge of that swing arm. It goes back way farther now, so somebody with some really long legs can get in here. Plus, kind of helps with the situation of, uh, you know, lowering the seat makes your legs stick out further, so that worked out nice. Um, I'd like to mention something about one of the little guys that's always in my videos. Well, not always, but a little blonde head kid, uh, about 12 years old. Uh, yesterday he, we was out riding, and uh, he was kind of showing off just a little bit. He was standing on his uh, Nerf bars, you know, steering, you know, and riding and standing on his Nerf bar. And his pant leg, like, I don't know, say this is the back of the Nerf bar. So, you know, this is basically a Nerf bar on this machine. His pant leg got grabbed by the tire. And he literally got sucked down in between the tire and the Nerf bar through that little space. His whole body got sucked down through there. And uh, he got his... From his el his right elbow all the way to his armpit was tore two different ways. Um, he had it was pretty gruesome. He had a uh, muscle and everything tore out of his arm. I think he had. Uh, and he's also worried about his kidneys because they got ran through there, and also his stomach and ribs. Don't really know all the details yet. Uh, I think he also broke his arm. Somebody actually said something about he had a bone sticking out of his arm. Sorry about all the gruesome, but that was a terrible accident. Um, he was life flighted. Um, so yeah, I mean, that was a terrible accident. Um, it's one of the things I like about building a machine like this. I mean, you at least have a roll cage and you're not really going to be outside of the, you know, the cockpit. Um, you know, accidents happen and thing, you know, things severe pretty happens on these, but I've seen a lot of videos of machines like this rolling clear down over a hillside and the guy walks away, you know. I'm really starting to lean more towards something like this. Um, but, yeah, just a little bit of thought for that guy. I feel bad for him. But, uh, well, I guess that's about all I got for this video and, uh, you guys later.